Hey everyone, welcome to Limitless Radio Cast, episode 116. Chad and I have decided this is going to be our last show. We're going to step away from podcasting. Don't know what the future will hold, but this show, we hang out with Jason Rabish. He's a black belt under Brian Marvin, a lead instructor and co-owner of Henzo Gracie Austin. He's also a retired LEO and co-owns Invictus and LEO training. They go all over and do seminars and all kinds of stuff with our good friend, R.E.K. So you guys just throw those headphones on, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, this show is also being brought to you by Global Auto Detailing, located in North Canton, Ohio. They have interior services, exterior detailing services, complete detail services. You can get monthly memberships. You gotta check these guys out. They are great at what they do. Warpath 55, located in Maslin, Ohio. Lanky Fight Gear. OldBonesTherapy.com. Thomas Webb of DeHoff Realtors. Candry Law LLC. Magic City Brewing Company. M&H Beans Coffee Company. Ronald E. Butler Tax and Accounting LLC. Also, check out Limitless Tape for all your customized gear for your academy. They'll get what you need. They also carry the best finger tape in the business. So everyone, Please support our sponsors as much as they support us. Now, you just need to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. So, and I'm going to screw this up, Chad, because I didn't ask <laughs> Jason how to pronounce his last name. So I'm just going to say Jason Ribish. Ribish. Uh, Repsh. It's okay. Repsh. See? It's the story, See? story of my life. I've been uh, <laughs> dealing with that name since I was born. <laughs> So Chad and I have the great honor and privilege to hang out with Jason. He is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt under Brian Marvin, as well as the lead instructor and co-owner of Henzo Gracie Austin. He is a retired LEO, as well as co-owns Invictus where, with our good friend R.E.K. that we had in the show before. He's also a, I'm going to not even go into the C, C, B, J, J, C, P, J, J. I screw that up every time because <laughs> all the acronyms and I work around acronyms at work. So I'm always trying to get them straight. But anyway, Jason, thanks, man, for hanging out with us. We appreciate it very much. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. That was one of my <laughs> one of my bad intros, Chad. I hey, knew it. It's all good. But we, but, we, we, we were consistent. Right. That's right. All right, man. <laughs> So how's uh so how's training going, Jason? How's uh it's good. how's it's, BJJ treating you, man? It's I mean I I have zero complaints. Good. Everything's going really good. I actually just got through with my morning sessions. Nice. And, uh, I got a little break here before tonight, so uh, got a chance to talk to you guys. But yeah, good. no, I have I have zero complaints. Everything's just going uh, really well. Good, 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 good. Um, I forgot. Uh, how long has Invictus been around now? Hmm. 2019. I was gonna say 2019 is when you guys like, took stuff. it off. Nice. Yeah, it? It, I believe that's correct. Yeah. Let me see. Was it 2000? Yeah, 2019. It's 2024, which is hard to believe. It's so. <laughs> yeah. We talk about this at like Chad and I will talk about this. You think it was like yesterday or whatever? You know what I mean? Like short period, and then you're like, wait, <clears> 2018, 2019, right before you know the world, whatever pandemic did out and, mm -hmm. uh, and all that time span, it's like, wow, we really did kind of mentally yeah. lose all that time. I, I think that's <laughs> our, that's our, like our, our, mar our marker now is, is, uh, COVID right. 2020 is kind of our marker. Like, was it before or after or sure. whatever, you know, that's what we think of now. It's crazy. And that's been over four years ago. I, I, COVID feels like lost time to me. Like I feel yeah. like, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. It's like two years. It just, I don't know where it went. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it and is, it's like sure. it just happened, and people were wearing masks and all the craziness. And when I see, I think I saw a movie or something recently where they were. It was during COVID, or at least that was the setting. And so okay. everybody's wearing masks, and it was yeah. Bizarre. I was like, I very bizarre. We were living like that. It's yeah. wild, man. I watch. Yeah. Um, I was just. <clears throat> I've been watching a lot of Forge and Fire lately, like older uh, episodes, and I'm like, oh wait, these were recorded during that time because the guys are like talking away from each other and they're throwing their mask on to go do their stuff and it kind of it blew me away when i first seen the first episode and i'm like why are the, like and then i was like wait a minute this was recorded you know back then you know because uh -huh. i'm i'm backlogging and watching some old shows but i was like yeah it is odd it's, it's just a weird time man i mean like we uh -huh. thank god you know we lived through it and we went through it and we learned and <clears> what <throat> we yeah. had to do to go through it but uh it's a yeah. super odd time man it was weird we will forever i think be like yeah that void like that two three yeah 
for right? sure. Like, never again. <clears throat> you know, <laughs> has Invictus yeah, been able to be? Has Invictus been successful still? I mean, from that, you know, when COVID, it's funny when COVID hit, it did kind of like uh, we had picked up some momentum. Good, and uh, we didn't really intend for it to become like this thing that it is now. Sure. It was, uh, it, it was just kind of a small project for <clears throat> cops to train jujitsu, and it turned into a, what was going to be a one-time seminar, and then all of a sudden now you know, we, we, it's becoming an annual thing, multiple seminars a, a year and stuff like that. But uh, at the time we, we had had a couple seminars. We had done a second one, I think. And uh, we had like a whole schedule set up for like, we had th- like three seminars set up. I think we had like Seattle and another Vegas maybe. And so we had like three coming up that we had already set up and then COVID hit and of course crushed, crushed everything, all of those. Of, yeah. And so that year was just like a real low key year. And I believe the next year we got back on the saddle and I can't remember which the first seminar was, but we finally started, I think it might've been Arizona or something like that. Okay. But, um, yeah. But yeah, COVID for sure. That one, that first year kind of year and a half, it kind of killed <clears throat> everything a little bit. I love what you guys are doing it too. It, <clears throat> now we bounced right out of it. Like, you know, it's, it's, you know, guys didn't stop training really good. They stopped down here. Sure. Yeah. I know. Like, obviously we have the, Pick and, different pick places, and choose different, different places. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Different people in charge of trying to control or whatever. Yeah. Well, we would, we would train. We would train at the gym, and of course, we're all like a lot of us were police officers at our gym. Sure. And, uh, I don't think I'll get anybody in trouble, but yeah, if a call would <laughs> because people would still complain, uh, they would just there was always a couple officers training probably, Good. and uh, they would just call <laughs> up, and let you know, like, hey, a call came in. We'll go ahead and close it out. We're like, okay, thanks. And nice. Just, yeah. nice nice that's awesome that's what a brotherhood is brother and yeah. sisterhood is though yeah. and especially for what you guys do and i mean let's be honest <laughs> and jason obviously obviously you could speak to volumes of this invictus that's why you guys you know came up with this company to implore leos and first responders to be quite honest to train mm-hmm. in as much training as they can get not just once a year a week or whatever that is for every different district or every different state or what however it is you know that's why i love it i love what you guys are doing it's always interesting to me when i know people outside that are leos or first responders and they don't train Mm -hmm. at all yeah and i'll be like oh you should train man like you should do this and you know i'm always like i wear my jacket for my uh, from our gym east coast and people ask all the time <clears throat> you know yeah. like hey <laughs> like where do you train and i'm like come train with us man and I'm like you guys are leos you get a discount too so <laughs> yeah actually i was just running a small leo class this last week and uh uh down in houston and i kind of got <laughs> off guys because they were getting we were training and i tell them every time because most of them don't train hey like go train like this class will become way easier if you're training like three times a week like you'll come in here and this will be easy like you'll nail this stuff on the regular Uh uh-huh i said but every time i come down every every couple months to teach uh you guys are behind and we got to start over and it's like packed to pummeling and i was like i know you guys aren't training because when i ask you guys to pummel you you still do the same stupid shit you did (laughs) (laughs) and uh and then you're getting winded after 45 minutes of drilling so uh, we got to that's a I great coach that. right there. Yeah. Like calling well, them out. I mean, you, you know, know what I mean? Cause it's good. You got to have accountability. You yeah. Know, like, they, you know, well, I used to work with a lot of those guys and, uh, and yeah, that they, uh, that they take it seriously. And, and I want them to all like come home safe every day. Yeah. So that's where it's coming from for me. It gets me very frustrated. Cause I, I told, I was even telling them, I was like, you know, I'm retired now. I'm out of it. So I'm not, you know, on the street, uh, in the job anymore. So I'm training and, and I, if I lose, I tap and I, it's no big deal. Sure. Like I'm, I might, me losing now is no big deal. <laughs> like I tap and I restart. Um, I was like, you guys, like when y'all lose, if y'all lose on the street, like it's that could good. be all the marbles. That could be, that's, you know, it. that's it. Yeah. You know, I don't, like, I don't understand like, the consequences for you losing are so extreme compared to like a hobbyist jujitsu guy or even a professional jujitsu person or fighter. Like your, yeah. your, your consequences are death. Yeah. It, it, worst case scenario or just or severe injury put you in a wheelchair or something mm-hmm. yeah you know, leos it's, it's crazy to me it's crazy it, to me it's you're 100 percent right i mean you know this uh you know leos are i don't say an anomaly but in this world in our in our bjj martial arts defending all that kind of stuff grappling <clears throat> there is no there's it's life and death 
Let's be mm-hmm. honest. The, uh, life and death versus a professional athlete or you know, I'm a hobbyist, right. whatever. Like, like you right. said, tapping, I'm moving on. I'm having a great time. I'm learning. I'm getting better. But for them, like they got to um, embrace it just yeah. like, you know, really embrace it. Have you seen more success <clears throat> since you guys have really been pushing this? I know after, you know, we talked, you know, before COVID and everything, you know, I know it's getting bigger. And, you know, when we had Ari on the show and we talked about, you know, other departments without, within other states that are starting to incorporate it and make it an almost yeah. mandatory mm-hmm. and stuff. Are you seeing I think it, that? It's, Go ahead, Jay. It's Sorry. I, yeah. It's got to come from the top down, right, Jason? I mean, if you, if you're, Higher ups don't embrace that. I don't feel like maybe I don't know if it's the old school mentality or yeah, we or talked about it, that. It, yeah. Coming you know? from the top down certainly would be immensely helpful. I think a good example <coughs> of from the top good top down leadership when it came comes to combatants is Mace, Arizona. Uh I think assistant chief Dan Butler. Uh he's kind of the one that and he trains, he's like a purple belt. He kind of pushed their their department to, to adopt C4C combatants, which is police jujitsu basically mm-hmm. it's a lot more than that but um you know the core at the core is jujitsu and uh really adopted that that program that that chad lyman and uh put together with some of the other guys out there um in vegas um but they've really fully adopted it and you see and so we go out there and teach on a consistent basis uh, i've been out there i think three times now and I'm super, I'm like super impressed every time I go out. These are, and the officers don't necessarily train jujitsu on a consistent mm-hmm. basis, but they train, they train C4C combatives mm-hmm. on a consistent okay. basis sure. at, at their department or at their mm-hmm. department and at their different substations. And uh, one thing they are on point with is their teamwork and utilizing uh, like jujitsu based combatives to get people under control. And they're on point. Like, even like if you roll with them, uh, nothing special. Some of them are do train on a consistent basis and are, and are solid, but some of them don't train on a consistent basis at all. It's just their combatives that they're doing a couple times mm-hmm. a week, uh, that their that their department pushes, and it shows like a huge difference of how well they work together. I know he's talked about their use of force issues, like um, how much they reduced use of force uh, issues just nice. with the implementation of this program. And, and they've, they've actually, I think they're going to release a study pretty soon because they had some oh, uh, like an outside <laughs> agency doing a study uh, on their use of force before and after adopting the program. And just from talking to chief Butler last time I was out there, he said like the, the stats are showing it, like they're showing how effective uh, having officers properly trained in combatives can be in, in, in so many different areas. So you're sure. Three, reducing use of force complaints. You go down the list. Like it's nothing but improvement all the way mm-hmm. around. That's awesome. That's great. I love to hear that because mm-hmm. obviously I love jujitsu. We wouldn't be doing this if we didn't. We wouldn't right. be having a show talking about it, obviously. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I do, the more I've gotten into it and, you know, read and studied and have family and friends and stuff that are either first responders or whatever, I think to myself, that's where it's at. Like, because you can change, you can change a lot. You change mm-hmm. the the outlook of what outside people think uh, of you know <clears throat> first responders, LEOs, and stuff like that. Obviously, seeing what's out there, and yeah. they're having a better chance. The percentage of them coming home <laughs> safely yeah. and soundly yeah. to their family is much much higher versus yeah. trying to use a you know <clears throat> a baton or a gun or a taser, mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. it is, whatever yeah. you know, equipment mm-hmm. out there. Terry, not Terry. You remember when we did that little? Uh, I was going to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. it blew we did me this away. Little, yeah, we did this little thing for our, like in the community where we uh, had mats. We had kids yeah. hitting pads, and you know, it was like a um, demo thing. But there was like a, a bunch demo of thing. Other stuff there, like other yeah. companies within the community were there. Yeah, and there was a lot of police officers there. Yeah. And um, as we were winding down, Terry and I were rolling on the mats just in our street clothes, right? And uh, an officer came over and was like, man, I wish I could still do that. Or, you know, he made, kind of made up all these right. excuses. And right. I'm like, you you can still do it. Like, and then he kind of patted his hip. He's like, this is all I need. And he had his baton. I'm like, oh, man. No. <laughs> yeah. Not that one. Yeah. yeah like, it's like, come on, man. You said that. I well, that. yeah. Yeah. That so well, that, You can't answer every problem with a it can't, with Right. You can't, man. It was Especially, hard. Like Chad and I and he wasn't. He wasn't wrong. young either. No. No. But he was probably you in know? his 50s. But it's yeah. not like. Well, it's yeah. about, it's about look at Chad Lyman. I mean, I'm not yeah. like, I'm not knocking Chad's age, but let's <laughs> that's, that's be honest. I mean, <laughs> yeah. no, hundred percent. I guess just, it's a lot of that's mindset. And when I mean mindset, I don't mean, Oh, I see, you know, I just have the will. 
It's no. making a decision to be disciplined and yeah, yeah. taking your job seriously. I officers don't like most officers just don't take their job seriously in that aspect. And uh, I, you know, I think that's probably really more just a historical. We have never till <clears throat> in the last 10 years, we didn't really have anything we could train that was super effective in helping officers. Cause we didn't, you know, if you go back, maybe, okay, go 20 years before jujitsu became mainstream. Right. And it's, mm-hmm. I think it's just real recently now that jujitsu is becoming a really kind of a mainstream thing. More officers people know about really it. For have sure. effective yeah. combatives. They, it was, mm-hmm. it was uh, tackle, tackle, and it was ground to pound. Until sure. People gave up. That's kind of what, that's really what combatives were. And they would try some things. There was, you know, I think some martial arts style training that I've, I've experienced and seen that's not effective. And they would try all these gimmicky like pressure point systems. And <laughs> yeah. but it was it, it was because you don't know what you don't know. So you're sure, you know, right, exactly. Yeah. You talk about top down, so like administrators don't know. Mm-hmm. And most of the time they're just checking off a box. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, yeah. it's they have a lot of things that they got to deal with. Uh and you know keeping city council happy, keeping citizens happy, uh, checking off all the yeah. proper, like uh, whatever, you know, liability class sure. to, or sexual harassment training yeah. that has to be done. That's mandated. So combative starts to really fall down the list uh, of things they're going to, and plus how many people are even capable of teaching good police combatives. That's, that's, even, the, uh, that's, that's really very many. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's getting a little better, but I was going to say, it's probably it's, getting better, right? Yeah. It is definitely getting better, but it's such a kind of a unique thing. Like some people will, well, if, and I've had this, like, well, I'm a black belt in jujitsu. I want to teach cops how to arrest people. I'm like, well, it's not that simple. You need, right. well, you can't just, it's not just jujitsu. There's a lot more to Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. There's context. There's goal. There's understanding, you know, proper goal, what an officer's goal is versus what, you know, if you've only done jujitsu and maybe some MMA or something, like most of us have, if you've gotten into jujitsu. Your goals are completely different. Mm-hmm. And so when you're applying techniques and you're trying to do things, it's for a completely different reason than if you're in a jiu-jitsu competition or even an MMA fight. Although I would say MMA has a lot of stuff that's the most uh, it has a lot of effective uh things in it that help officers sure. Sure. Right. There's more, a transparency more with techniques there. Fight. Say again. There's a transparency with techniques there. Like if you're yeah. watching an MMA fight, you know, cage being able to lock mm-hmm. down, mm-hmm. secure, um, yeah. you know, same prin- like the same principles. Same principles, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, Blocking right, takedown, right. get being on able top, to control. Yeah, control, control on top. Yeah. 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 Like me, like so doing a citizen, yeah, I could do it, but yeah, it's gonna, you know, I'm a blue belt, I could do it. But yeah. it's way different than what an LEO is yeah. going. Like at the end of the day, no, you're when I see stuff that you guys put online you know I, I try to watch just i love the support i want to i want to see what's going on out there man. and i see it and i'm like whoa this is way yeah. different and they have to try to control a guy that might have a gun or a knife yeah. like and you have a gun on your hip and you have right to yeah themselves. right and they're always in play as well and uh the factors and the the amount of factors involved and that's not even the the hardest part i mean that is one of the hardest parts sure but you also have to realize that the officer has to take into considerations as policy the law yeah. You know, policy. Uh, he's he's taking in so many factors while trying to physically control somebody. Also staying inside the law, depending on where he lives, that can become very restrictive. Yeah. Uh, you know, what jurisdiction and, and what rules they put sure. on officers there. That can open you up, <clears throat> depending on jurisdiction, to criminal liability, which is, of course, a <clears throat> the officer that's just trying to physically control someone who's fighting them. Um, you know, so they're going through like a million different you know, variables while they're trying to get someone under control, right. And not die. And, uh, versus if you're just like regular training, the variables are greatly reduced. Yeah. Greatly reduced. Um, yeah. So it's, it's understanding that context. Um, that's super important, but it's, it's man, it's, it's now that I'm not in it and being in it and being out of it, it your perspective, you get a little bigger perspective when you're out of it. Cause you can see the bigger picture a little bit. Sure. Better. And you realize like, um, <clears throat> like what a challenge it is for officers uh and, and it's getting more difficult because of, of the way society is and, yeah. and the way we're the amount of responsibilities we're putting on officers to protect people while while trying mm-hmm. to do their job um man it's it is i don't i would not advise my son to get into law enforcement right now <laughs> that's what i was going to ask you like when you got out 
was it transitioning at that point in time or I got out a little early. Okay. Before it was, there was two factors. I was, well, it was, we were already in it because it's three years ago, a little over three years ago, I retired. Um, So we'd been through like a lot of the, we were in the middle of COVID and so we've gone through a lot of the, the, the BLM stuff and things mm-hmm. like that, that we were yep, all doing. Yep. And um, so I, I kind of made a decision to retire early because I just felt like it wasn't coming back anytime sure. soon. Sure. And, uh, you know, I, I needed to transition out uh, for my own mental health and physical health. And uh, it was time to move on to the next Good. next phase of my life. Although I'm still mm-hmm. in involved with law enforcement I'll, i i will be for the rest of my life in some form or fashion sure uh, you know i'm not on the job anymore i'm yeah. i'm not out of the job your that passion way. is paying it forward passing the torch teaching yeah teaching, i really teaching and encouraging yeah that. i do i i do want to i want to keep teaching and uh try to get everybody safer pass the knowledge forward mm-hmm. try to get as many people training as possible and uh, just keep improving <laughs> as best i can from my position do my best to sure. contribute to it getting a little bit better. Yeah. And that's the the steps that you have to take. You know, this in any kind of policy driven um, thing that we want to get people to learn, understand, help them, you know, it takes that much. It takes baby steps sometimes, but then you got to stay the course and stay, yeah. you know, with a push in which it's super hard, obviously frustrating. And, you know, I'm sure you go through that a lot or, or yeah. like, we're, you know, talking about people not, you know, training yeah. and trying to get it implemented and getting people to understand. It is cool to hear you say like that perspective, how long did it take like to go? Oh, not that you never thought about this while you were on the job, but uh-huh. to go, man, yeah, they do have to, we have to think about a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you know, after it, the fact, it, it would come down when once I started, you know, training on a really consistent basis. And then I think around purple belt is when I started really started to look at how I can apply what I was learning to, to what I was to the job. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of trial and error there. I was experimenting a lot. I was posting a lot of stuff. On, I started posting stuff about that time, but I was experimenting on things like things that work for me on the mat. And I thought, well, this would be effective if someone attacked me, like in a law enforcement context. Sure. Uh, I would I would try to see how well that worked with gear on. I would film it. I would discuss it. And a lot of stuff I filmed back then, I wouldn't advise today at all. Like, I, <laughs> the, I mean, if you have this, we always say if you have the skill set, you have the skill set and you can sure. apply it in a lot of circumstances. But it's not something, uh, there's a lot of things I taught that I would no way like teach uh officers now to try to apply like it would definitely be a lot of some of the stuff i used to like i would show like throwing like omoplatas out on people to get you know get them into cuffing which can 100 percent work sure. but it's a highly skilled you know that's a highly yeah. skilled yeah. move yeah. under stress and uh and the ante uh, between life and death jason's yeah, like, so like, if, like <laughs> no. if like i had nothing else and the guy's on top and like I, that's there then yeah we're gonna right. go to it and we're gonna get on top right sure. but it not my primary go-to <laughs> right, right. I'm right. in a bad spot if I'm throwing an omoplata out to get out of it. Yeah, there. it's like tenth on the list. <laughs> it's I'm I've fucked up a long time ago, as Kurt Orsander would say. If I'm yeah. in that where I'm throwing an omoplata yes. out, but yeah. that's still me now. Close guard. I'm like, ooh, I got my feet up on the hips. I'm gonna throw this omoplata, and I'm like, this is a bad idea, dude. Don't do it. Like he's gonna bypass <laughs> your legs and get top control or something stupid. So then I'll go. Yeah. For <laughs> Unless yeah. you're Chad, because he's got these long, lanky legs that are just—he's yeah. uh, got <laughs> spider <definitely> legs. <laughs> it was a process. I, I, and then I were you asking about coming up on retirement? Was that what you were asking about? Well, or? I was wondering, like, when you, you know, you said um, the perspective changed a little bit when you were off oh, the yeah. job, and um, I just was curious, like that transition of going. Well, I, I think I went from so I, you know. When I started running a, an academy full time, and once it really got going, and now we're really full, and I have a lot of, I have people who are hobbyists that train two times a day, you know, or three <clears> times a day, like they're here all day. Sure. And I'm like, these are just hobbyists. And they're like, maybe they're trying to have a little bit of a competitive career, but ultimately, Hobby, they're yeah. like what we call extreme hobbyists, right? Yep. They're super like into jujitsu and they love it and they want to get really good at it. Um, but they're just doing it for fun or maybe to maybe some small competitive aspirations, depending on some of these guys. Right. And they're putting their heart into it. And I'm like, my God, like you go on the street and take calls with people who will fight you and you're not training. 
Like people will, yeah. fight. you don't even get to choose a lot of times when someone's going to fight you. They yeah, just you have no option you for you. I don't choose to fight anybody when I was working. Like I was trying right. to fight all the time, but people, you know, they dictate what happens a lot of times when you're working. And so you just have to be ready to go at all times. And, uh, but it amazes me police officers that I don't know. I don't, I, 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 I guess it's a little bit of, you don't know what you don't know. So you think you can fight because you've gotten lucky a few times, or maybe you're a little big of a bigger guy. So you can kind of bully most people, which is, sure. which is good, but there's people as big as you that that's not going to work on or people more dedicated to, to fighting than you. Mm-hmm. And what I mean, dedicated to fighting, like fighting you in that moment, like they're more dedicated than you are. They're more dedicated yep. to escaping you than yep. you are to put them in cuffs. Yep. Yeah. And that's a problem for someone who doesn't train and who's not ready to go. Like it's a big problem. But these mm-hmm. guys, these, these, you know, a lot of officers, they just, it's down the list and I get it. You got family, you got to pay bills. You're working extra jobs to make extra ends meet. Or maybe just working extra jobs because you want that big ass truck. I don't know. Sure. But right. The priorities the, to me, this should be up on the priority list. And you can <laughs> support that because your family should want your odds of coming home to increase. And if you train, your odds are increasing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, in my opinion. Yeah. And and we can talk about how to make it, you know, how to get people to train more, but ultimately it comes down to them, right? I mean, we can, yeah. and I'm sure you've heard it, Jason, like, well, I don't have, I can't do it at this time, but we have 6 a.m. classes or we have, we have classes all over the board and we have discounts and we have everything. So yeah. now it's on your, it's in your court. What's your yeah. next, re- what's the next reason you can't come? Yep. You it's know? True. Yeah, it's true. But And it, it's for, that's, that's for everybody, not just LEO, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But if, if you want to do it, you'll do it. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, 100%. Like, if, if you want to do it, you'll do it. Or if you find it important, You'll do it if you yeah, don't. Yeah, because because I'm sure as an officer, you're go- they're going to the range and pra- target practicing and everything. Well, I don't know about that either. <laughs> Maybe not. No. Yeah, yeah. no. I've heard stories not, about not, yeah. not, like a lot of guys. The only time they pull their 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 weapon out is when they're qualifying once or twice a year. Yeah, that's gotcha. what. I, yeah, that's, that's another that's, scary topic, right that's, there. That's, yeah, it's the lack of training overall by officers. Yeah, officers yeah. do not train for worst case scenarios. We <laughs> train. We take class. We we train to promote. So we'll take classes so we can test up and promote out Mm -hmm. we'll learn uh everything we can learn about different types of drugs and how they treat and how people react to them sometimes or whatever niche in law enforcement you get yourself into you'll really some guys will dive not everybody but some guys will dive into it uh but the stuff that we that we're required to do like you have to be able to go hands-on with people you have to be able to drop past you have to be able to you know make these decisions we did shooting you know shoot don't shoot can you shoot under stress and moving we do not train these on a consistent basis very few places there's always departments that are ahead of the curve and that are doing the extra and there's always the officers that are that are the one percenters that do the work but majority of officers do not do the extra training they do the minimum possible and then they go home that's that's, that's a fact that's just yeah that's most officers there's a parallel there there's between a people that walk into jujitsu gym. It's only one percent of people like make it to the end. I know yeah. there's so yes, definitely different in terms of the physicality and what you have to go through. But right. like becoming an right. LEO, but you're there's kind of like right. a, yeah, and so yeah. all law enforcement is it's a it's a segment. It's it's a it's a snapshot of the population. So yeah, you get yeah. the same type of people. I mean, yes, different. There's different types of people in law enforcement, maybe versus other career fields, but it's still from general society. So you're going to get the same type of individuals with the same kind of motivation, sure. uh, motivation to put in work that you do in other career fields as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you got your guys that work hard, you guys are guys that do just enough, and you got your guys that that skate and uh, hide. To right. Avoid. So it's it's you know, and the majority of people. Don't do the work. Majority of people either do just enough or skate and get by. Well, I hope it's I, unfortunately. I mean, it's, yeah, I'm, we're trying to change it. We're yeah, pushing. I mean, I think what you guys are doing, it's uh, the trajectory. The pot, it's only got to be positive, right? It is I mean, getting if better, we keep like pushing 100%. It, I don't want to be like Debbie <laughs> doom and gloom, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, right, right, right. I, but it is no, a no, problem, no. And, I, and I do feel I do get very frustrated with officers who don't do the work. And they, but they go, they you should because they, that, they, you've put yeah. a ton of work in, you've put a ton of effort studying. You have friends, uh, close friends, obviously, and people that you've started, you know, corporations with and companies to teach these, these mm-hmm. young mm-hmm. men, young women, whatever it may be across the board. So yeah, you, you got to feel some frustration, man, because that's a lot of hard work on your part. You're trying to change <clears> something <throat> where you're probably getting a little bit of 
grind against the grain versus gliding with the grain. You know what I mean for you? Uh, yeah, it's it's better for sure. Like there's more officers. Like our last seminars have been like we did in New York. And uh, we had over 120 at that one. Nice. Uh, Tahoe, which is coming up in June. We're going to have over 120 at the at a, a three-day combatants. <clears throat> nice. Uh, nice. The, the numbers are there. Like, they have definitely, like, guys are training. Like, people are training. I get messages. Guys are jumping in. But yeah. it's still a small group. Sure. Overall. The percentages. It is, it is improving. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. But it is definitely improving. Like, I've definitely seen uh, – like you said, there's, there's a, the cur the, the lines going up, so to speak, like Good. The, getting better and better, mm -hmm. you know, so it's happening. It's, it's going to be a process. We want it to, but right. right. at least it's and improving I, and not getting worse. Sure. That's the thing too. Like, that's what, that's the, like to hear that the stats are going to come out on the, the, the one um, Mesa. Yeah, yeah, Mesa. That'll be great. It's great to feed that information to people and, you know, having these more seminars and, you know, word of mouth that, yeah. you know, even though we have social media and, and we want to use it to the best of our ability, the word of mouth obviously is like, Hey, this really works guys. Like you're talking to your fellow officers, um, to, to convince them, not just you and, you know, those who are in your position really speaking to those individuals out there, it's others that you've taught them and they're passing it down the line and mm -hmm. talking to them as well and trying to convince them to come in. Cause yeah. I think that's one way it's going to have to work. You know, I, I can't wait to see the day, you know, I'll be old, but <laughs> I see the day where it's going to be like, that's what everyone does. Uh, they all like do it because it's like, Hey man, if that percentage goes from me coming home at 75% every single night on a shift to 95% coming home safe without scratches. Well, guess mm. what, man, you just bumped a 20% life expectancy to come home. If that can be proven to people and they get on board with it, then, mm. then that's going to start changing things. And yeah, it, like you said, Jason, it's a slow process. I get it. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, one thing I think will help. And so a lot of, a lot of administrators are, have been around for a while. And I think as these guys age out and retire, that's this yeah. group of officers have come up with jujitsu, have come up yep. with more, more of this mindset, uh, how important this kind of training is. Um, and maybe some of the hard lessons we've learned over the last few years where we've had <clears throat> incidents. And I, I don't want to like argue about what they were, what they weren't, but they brought to light the need for training. One yep, way or yeah, another. yeah. And one way or another, we're, for sure. We're better training, better trained officers, uh, right or wrong. Uh, whatever happened may have handled the situations in a more efficient and safer manner. Uh, and maybe things would have worked out differently in, in a lot of, a lot of areas where we've had problems. So maybe as this, this current older group of administrators ages out and this newer group comes in, I think we'll see more departments like Mesa, Arizona. I know Marietta, Georgia, they've done yeah. a lot of stuff. Jacksonville <clears throat> I've gone down there a couple of times and they, they have a, a blue a jujitsu program in their police Academy um, that, that really pushes combatants and training. And um, these things will, I think continue to increase, but it will take it ultimately like yes, there's grassroots in it. Like us training, this is grassroots. Like what what Ari and I and some in, in Chatties. This is <clears> grassroots <throat> that we're troops pushing it, um, mm -hmm. and getting other troops to do it and get guys to do it. Mm -hmm. That's the grassroots part. But hopefully, some of these guys, as they become administrators, then the top down will happen. And I think when that happens, you'll see a, at least in more medium to larger size departments, <clears throat> a more effective training programs that are going to be jujitsu based. I think in the future for sure. Good. Yeah, definitely. And that's a, you know, we talked about Chad brought that up when we had him on the show is, you know, we had, we got to see uh, lack of better terms, the old guard, we got to see the old guard. They got to go. We got to, no, they got to go because right. I've heard some things where, uh, one of my friends, he, <laughs> this is one of my favorite stories. He's really, he's pretty solid <laughs> at jujitsu. He, he's, I've taught with him before. And he said is he had a chief that thought it was stupid oh this is dumb you don't need this in my day i didn't need it and he had the story he and so he goes into this story about how he had this knockdown drag out fight with this suspect but he came out on top and blah 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 and my friend's response was well if you trained jujitsu it wouldn't have been a knockdown drag out fight yeah he doesn't work at that department anymore yeah, so, oh, <laughs> but he was like that was facts the are facts answer. man i mean that was the perfect answer it's like yeah, yeah it was. It was cool story bro but we're, let's let's do what works, not what makes you right. sound tough. You right. know, yeah. Right. If you're an LEO and you want to be tough, 
like if you want to just be like I'm tough because I'm an LEO. In my personal opinion, I think you're in the wrong the wrong field of work. <laughs> well, if you want to be tough, go train. Or or go train so you're well, tough to protect yeah, everyone. Sure. Or yeah. you're right because it's the toughness is going to. You leave. may not get yeah, good, well, but you train long enough, you'll get tough. Yeah, yeah. For sure. What is yeah. tough, right? What, what is, is tough, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> for uh, sure, definitely. Yeah. Well, on the flip side, man, do you miss it? Do you miss uh, retirement? Uh, do some more fishing so, you know, and uh, do I was, BJJ in the gym? No, I'm just kidding. I, was, I, was thinking, I, was, I mean, I wouldn't trade it for what I'm doing now. But uh, I was talking to one of my uh, uh, one of my friends. He coaches coaches here with me, and we were talking last night. And so we just started talking, and like uh, I, he was asking me stories about <clears throat> work. And so all of a sudden, like all these you know things that are coming back, yeah. coming back, and like you know these different things, arrests and fights or whatever. And so I was telling him a couple of stories. And, um, I, there was a little nostalgia in some of it, like, oh man, that was fun. Okay. I remember when we, this happened we chased this guy and I caught him and my buddy came around the corner and, you know, all those fun and things that happened in law enforcement were that kind of develops that, uh, that kinship you get with the guys you work with. Yeah. Um, it was remembering it, but I, 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 you know, I, I can't say I miss doing the job itself. Like, um, or I miss I miss maybe doing the job itself, but I don't miss everything else around it. Sure. Because with it, yeah. Yeah. Definitely and miss I, the I, people that you were with, you know, you're, you, I, yeah, I miss like, the camaraderie. I, yeah. I miss a little bit of that, that, that camaraderie. I still get it a little bit because I get to teach with Chad and, and Justin and Mike and all the guys when we go different places and teach. Uh, so, yeah, good. Uh, so I still get that feeling. And I made friends from, with lots of officers from different departments around the country. And so when we get to come back around and teach in that area, or they come to a seminar, I still have that, you know, maybe we haven't worked on the street together, but because we have that common bond and a common yeah. mindset and we've trained together, you know, there's something about training jujitsu with somebody that kind of breeds a similar oh. uh, thing that you get working with people on the street. Um, we it's, it's even stronger with officers who train because you kind of, you already have the, uh, the, the, the for lack of a better term the brotherhood of being police officers or sure. sisterhood or right. whatever um but then you add in the fact that we both train and maybe we both train a lot and so then the, you have these nice fun training rounds where you're sharing another thing you love that actually helps you with the other thing that's important to you too sure. so it kind of it, it, i do still get a little bit of that uh, and i get that here with with the people i train with in jujitsu and in my coaches and and whatever so we still get to experience that on on some level <clears throat> I Good. do miss a little bit of the the some of the stuff that we did together yeah. and some of the excitement, <laughs> some of the excitement and coming yeah, out sure. of it on on top and then like yeah. that's you know, normal, man. Yeah, that's, that was crazy. I mean, yeah. Let's go. Let's do this paperwork. Yeah. Let's knock this stuff out. You know, that's going to be. A little bit of that. But I wouldn't trade it. Like I'm sure. very very content with my life Good. right now. Like yeah. everything is going very well, and and uh, I'm I'm. I think about it often and sure. I'm very thankful for, for my life right now. I'm yeah. Very thankful. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, like I, like I said earlier, I mean, it's a, uh, you're in a position now to, you know, not just pay it forward because you've been paying it forward for years. I kind of look at people who have trained jujitsu that are higher belts. They're always paying it forward because they're trying to teach the people that are coming through the door everything they can. It's not like you come in and be like, sweet, I'm going to beat this guy up and send him on his way. You know what I mean? Like, it's <laughs> oh, like, no, 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 no. I want to get in the day every... used to be like that. No, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. We've talked about that. Many no, times, I started, you know? it was like, that. I don't know how I made it through those first six. Months. I was going to ask you. So BJJ came before LEO, right? No, or, no. Or did you start? Okay. Years. You're an officer. I started okay. jujitsu when I was 33. Okay. And uh, I'd been a cop for about five years and I knew like, I'm getting lucky. Like I'm, I'm not. A good guy <laughs> and uh, I had a couple scraps where I was like, "Yeah, I'm getting a little lucky." So I, I actually tried Krav Maga first because I had a friend that did Krav and he okay. taught Krav, and it was cool. But I didn't. It didn't feel like a very. It, it just didn't feel like it was something I could take to work because we yeah. were doing eye gouges and throat yeah. grabs and <laughs> all this weird Krav shit. And uh, I was like, man, I don't know if I could do this on the that street. That might be against our policy. I can't see uh, yeah. this guy in the eye. Wait. <laughs> yeah. My brother actually was like, because he was a lifelong martial artist and he had just gotten into jujitsu. Well, he had been kind of toying with jujitsu for a little while. He was more of a traditional martial artist at first. And still was. But uh, he told me, he goes, I think you should try jujitsu. I think it would work. So I went to, I took a class that I could find at a gym or academy. 
And uh, yeah, it was a, awesome. I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what we do. We tack, we grab people and we control them. I'm not yeah. the one getting grabbed and controlled right now, but this is what I need to learn. Sure. And, uh, yeah, it, it bit me right away. And I, I didn't look back once I started. Nice. Did you play any sports when you were younger? Yeah, I did. I was pretty active. I was, I played a lot of like, um, I grew up in Germany. Oh, wow. No kidding. Yeah. So I grew up playing like club soccer team, <clears throat> club tennis teams. Uh, I played basketball. My dad was actually a college basketball player. Oh, nice. And he's like six foot. My mom was 4'11. So I'm like barely 5'7. He wanted me to play college basketball, but my mom was like, listen, you know, I don't <laughs> think he's going to, I don't think he has it. Although I, I still like to play basketball. I have a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had an athletic background. So jujitsu is just, it was fun. Like it's, it kind of yeah. lets you tap into that again and yeah. that, <clears throat> get the competitive stuff out too, you know? Not to anyone out there that's listening, you don't have to have any kind of <laughs> no background because no. Chad, you Chad never did a sport in his life until he started jujitsu, right? Except martial arts, except well, I did martial arts. arts. I you yeah, know yeah, played, yeah, ba- yeah. played backyard basketball and stuff, but yeah. yeah. Do you think yeah. let me ask you a question? Do you think um having a non-athletic background in the long run is better for you? uh in your Ooh. in your journey than not i mean maybe Great i mean we question. all you know i played that what if so many times like i didn't wrestle right like oh man i mean yeah. what if i wrestled i wish i would have wrestled but would my guard game be as good as it is now because i would have been a wrestler you know what i mean yeah so you you know maybe those habits you know different athletic I, habits I, I feel like because because i'm relatively athletic and when i started i would win a lot on athleticism with my peer group right with other white yeah people. right and uh, but there was a point where they started get beating me, and I didn't understand what was happening. What, right? Now I look back, and I go because I was just winning with athleticism. I was I wasn't really using technique. Sure, right. And, uh, so they were learning technique because they had to. Where they I had to so much, and yeah. then I was behind. And then I remember like realizing, oh, I got to learn like actual technique. I can't just be running around people. Yeah, uh, you know, I felt like it kind <clears> of. <throat> I felt like I had a two year slow start. Because I was just, it took me a while to realize, like, oh, you got to technique is super. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Te- yeah. And when you don't, it matters, right? Yeah. yeah. When you don't, kind of you don't, yeah. And being like, I'm a smaller yeah. guy now. So I'll be 49 this year. I'm mm-hmm. six foot between 155 and 160. When I started jujitsu in 2004, I weighed 128 pounds. Wow. Yeah. That's six foot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I've just always been tall and thin and, you know, um, but you're like the worst guy to roll with. He is. Now, he's now yeah. Guy, like, yes. Oh yes. He has three legs. Like, and Dude, like, like those that. legs and limbs come from everywhere. It's like, where did yes. that come from? 20 years later, I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, my guard. Got, I'm like, I can't pass your guard. There's too many legs. Like <laughs> one of my coaches, he's like six, four. Uh, and uh, he's a black belt as well. And like, we'll roll together and I'll think I'm passing his guard. And then this foot will come out of like, South America and, catch <laughs> the and regard. And then next thing you know, I'm actually getting sumigashi over to my back. I'm like, where did that foot come from? Uh, I tell you what, the best feeling as a guard player is recovering when they think they've passed oh. and just having a hook, you know, getting a hook right in at the last second. Oh man. I, I am a guard player at heart too. I play a lot of guard. Yeah. I've been trying, I've been changing my game a lot now for more wrestling and, and stuff like that. But, um, I was going to ask you that where your game is now, like where you're, where you're comfortable at guard. I'm always, I'm, I love guard. Yeah. Guard is so (laughs) enticing because it's so much fun. Uh, There's so much you can do. Everybody gives you guard. Well, now everybody wants guard, right? But back in the day, everybody took top game. So, and I was small anyway. So you have to play bottom. Like people are just going to take top and there's nothing I can do about it. So I had to learn guard, but I'm a guard player. I love playing guard. So when I teach police stuff like it's a total difference from what i normally do uh because i'm although i train what i teach a lot like i focus on that too but mm-hmm. at my heart when i'm playing competitively i'm pulling guard and, and playing from the guard position nice. yeah nice. i'm getting super competitive you know you uh have you competed before jason like, like- i have I've, you know i'm not a great competitor i've done some competitions uh, i won my last fight so i haven't and that was like two and a half years ago and i'm like okay I want to fight again after that. I was going to ask you. That's I was going to ask you. Maybe I should finish out. <laughs> one and done, baby. I'm out. <laughs> it, was like, uh, my, it was like one of the last, you know, anyway. I'm, I'm actually going to think, I've been training pretty hard. And like, you know, I've been fortunate enough. I get to train with like John and, and Nicholas every day. And so my game has really gotten like a lot better over the last couple of years. Like it's really improved. 
part of that's because I'm on the mat all the time now because I'm retired and this sure. is my job. And then part of it is I get to train with those guys in, in, in that room. So my jujitsu has really jumped up. And so um, I've been thinking about maybe getting back into some no gi competition just to, nice. just to see how well – I know how well it translates. My my game is translating um, in the practice room. Mm-hmm. But I kind of I'm kind of curious to see how well, and I know how well it translates when I go to other places to train, uh, other gyms when I'm teaching and stuff. And we're sure. Training people not from here, uh, but it, I would like I I kind of wouldn't see how it translates in a competitive environment with with someone else. I think it'll translate well. So I've been kind of thinking about getting back into it. Nice. I'm, more, I'm 50 now, so it's kind of a weird, like you know, competing with other 50 year olds. You know, it feels nothing wrong with it, but I don't know. It feels but, silly. Yeah. Because yeah, I, don't from, know, I don't know why sure, it, right. it feels silly to compete, like you know. But in a way, it feels silly. But part of me wants to do it too. I don't know why not. I think there's always that comp. You know, there's always that competitive <clears throat> aspiration inside you. If you've ever competed in your life, and then when you start yeah. jujitsu, you know, I know we talk, you know, the ego out and stuff. And look, I've been tapped a million times, but just be honest, it feels good when you succeed. <laughs> I'm not driving home with the music off. I'm driving home with it on. You know what I mean? Like it is when it's a good night, it's a good night. And you're like, okay, that technique's working and I feel good, you know, but sometimes you do go, you know, I'll find myself chat, you know, before I haven't done it in a while, but, uh, he'll be like, why are you, what are you doing? I'll be 47 here in a couple of weeks. It's like, why are you rolling with that 20 year old white belt? That's like, he's going nuts. Like he's trying to kill you because he, he knows what you know, or he doesn't know it. You know what I mean? But I'm just trying. And I go, well, I got to test myself. Like I got to see if this yeah. works, you know, <laughs> you can, you just got to right. roll with him a little different. Yeah. 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 I'm huffing and puffing I, and almost I throwing up too, afterwards. But. <laughs> I don't know, Jason, how you are, but I think like you said, competing with other 50 year olds, like I don't, I don't 50 sounds old. I'm not old. <laughs> right. Like I don't, I, I think I because we're, it. that's what I mean. We're around yeah. young people a lot. Yeah. So I, I feel like I'm still in my mid thirties or whatever, you know, like, I, I, I feel physically the same way for the most part. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Definitely there. It's, it's, you know, I think a big thing I've, that's, that's worked for me is, is um, being very, very more, much more disciplined with my diet. What sure. I put in my body. Mm-hmm. Cause, yeah. cause I'm, you know, I'm when you, and I, I know you're probably the same way you're on the mat all day. And so you're teaching or training it multiple times during the day. Yep. And so you're constantly being physical, twisting around, moving, even if you're just teaching constantly, mm-hmm. thing, moving people around, you know, and doing those things, it kind of takes a little toll on you. And then if you do it seven days a week, you know, learning, I think one of the things that's helped me is one good <clears throat> strong diet. That's that, that were like a lot of steak and things like that, that helped me with my, my physical recovery mm-hmm. uh, in a good lifting program to kind of keep my body more durable. And that's really yeah. helped me a lot is, is focusing <laughs> on the lifting with intention. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a, I want to give a shout out to my personal trainer, Jimmy house. Uh, he is one, he's a, he's a high level black belt himself. Nice. And, uh, he also is a, a, a wizard with, uh, with personal training and, and maximizing the potential strength and, and whatnot with your body. And uh, just working out with just training with him, like the last six months, I think I've been training with him seven months, five, five or six months. Like my, my, it is it's, it's helped my durability on the mat tremendously. And it's even helped my jujitsu tremendously too. Like it's 100%. Definitely, it, it makes a huge difference. I think personally <clears throat> train a lot in, for a long period, for a long period time of your life to build yeah. that kind of that physical durability, that lifting, I think and building a little muscle can give you uh if you want to do this till you're like 70 or yeah. 80, like I want to do like, I don't know. Yeah. That's the, and you know, the guys that stick around, you know, Chad just started, and I'm not going to speak for you, Chad, but Chad has a personal trainer now doing weightlifting, not something he's ever done before. It, I it, yeah. And I tell people all the time, you know, I'm like, throw, I'm not asking you to go throw around like giant amount of plates. Let's be honest. That's not what, that's not what you should be doing. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, I'm deadlifting 500 pounds today. Like, no, 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 like, what? Like, no, that's yeah. not like the type of training. There are specific training that you should be doing. That's going to keep you tuned in for a long period of time. And obviously what you put in your body is what your body's going to put out for you, you know? Yeah. And, and it's funny though, as we get older, it's like, dang it. Like it took me too long to figure that out. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, like ah, hundred percent dude. 20 years ago. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I'd be like, man, I'd be, Superman right now, if yeah, I did this 20 years we ago. We all think that, right? <laughs> right, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I was I was always that guy that only jujitsu was my only thing I needed, right? It was my cardio, it's my whatever, you know. But you know, now that I've been weight training two times a week for the last six or eight months, man, it's it's huge. You feel way better. Oh, dude, it's crazy. Yeah, what I feel, do you feel so like much better. Like the durability, the strength, the uh, the strength right now is what I yeah. noticed. So so far, yeah, I mean, the durability. You know, I've knock on wood, I've had one injury in twenty years of jujitsu, and it was just a couple years ago where I sprained my MCL. Yeah, and I was off the mats for I don't know, Terry, what was it, three, four I was months, say, five months? Yeah, and you weren't fully like off. That. I mean, you were off, but you were there. Well, I was there. You yeah. would teach and do the best you can but to brace. So yeah, I was talking to one of my my guys, brown belt Tim Stinson, who's um, lifted a lot his whole life. And, you know, I was telling him the immediate, not immediate, but how I was feeling with strength in my jujitsu already. And it was just blowing my mind. And he's like, listen, most guys start jujitsu already strong and that's what they're using. Mm -hmm. You have 20 years of experience and now you're adding strength to what you already know. You know what I mean? So yeah. that kind of, yeah, yeah. that kind of clicked for me. I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's yeah. way different. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's probably a really good. Yeah, you'll add the strength to the technique and versus yep. yeah, the way yeah. You said, yeah, try to find technique after using strength all that time. Yeah, that's yeah. me. I came in strong. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what. Most, <laughs> and then most, it was like, yeah, this doesn't. I don't it, care how strong you thing. are. It's a thing, man. Like it's a thing yeah. when you're only with someone who's pretty good and they strength train pretty consistently and maybe, oh, yeah. maybe add some type of extra <laughs> substance into their body to make it. <laughs> Like there's a, there's a difference. It feels yeah. very different and having strength to at least keep up with that, or at least to be able to carry that, I think is huge. It makes, yeah. it makes a big difference for me. Anyway. For sure, dude. Yeah. For sure. I can tell like in my frames and stuff like that a lot. Yeah. Just moving. Yeah. Cause you have that extra. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you need it. Yeah. Nice. So it feels you know, good. They're bringing a little extra. You can counter that a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Collapse down by it. It's awesome too now, like versus, you know, you guys have a lot of years of experience and and being, uh, you know, within BJJ, you know, we talked about on the show before that's being implemented more now than it ever was before and all that stuff. We're being smarter. Um, yeah. professionals are taking care of themselves better, obviously professional jujitsu guys, you know, they're being, you know, nutrition and lifting properly or doing whatever the training is different. It's not just, you know, bang, bang, bang every single day, all the time. We talk about MMA, you know, UFC fighters or any kind of professional MMA fighters, they're doing the same thing. You know, they're working on changing that from just let's train as hard as we can and fight, <laughs> you know, it's just all been all like, the old, the right. <laughs> Learning how to so. practice is so huge. I, I didn't know how to practice till maybe till really till John got here. I because before that it was kind of I don't want to say Bahada all the time, but pr pretty much live training with slap bump roll, you know, and let's go. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, learning how to kind of train properly has been huge for my jujitsu. Like like with that intentional training, situ like the situational training is so important. Learning how to like learning to understand and I don't even like to call like I try to push real hard with the students that this is a practice room like you're here to yeah. practice you should treat this like any sports practice you're trying to develop technique and get better right. with teammates you're not trying to you know win adcc on a practice mat you know you're trying <clears> to <throat> skills and develop them and we push that real hard here like practice practice this is practice and, yeah. and everybody's pretty good about it and it makes the quality of the rounds so much better and it makes your ability at least for me my my experience it makes the ability to 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 develop technique and to add it into your your actual game like just so much better you know yeah, it makes that sure. world so much easier you know yeah you're gonna get more out of it that way you yeah, know that way fighting. Yeah. right and then when it yeah, comes you're not fighting because what do you do when you fight right you run to your a game to protect yourself every so time you really you'll just do the a game all the time you'll all never the time. try to develop other stuff because you, you're just getting smashed and destroyed. Yep. And uh, but even still, you should still try to do it, even if you're getting smashed and destroyed, just part of the process, right? But having a good practice mindset, like teammates with that mindset as well, makes a huge difference. Yeah, for sure. That's where I found in you know trying to test myself was I'd fall into do what you're really pretty good at right now <laughs> because yeah. you're trying, this guy doesn't really know and he's trying to smash you and you're kind of panicking not panicking but you know a little like ah crap this isn't working let me just go to what i know yeah. until i started going well forget it if i get killed by this kid that's fine okay. but i'm still gonna try this right and you know hey, i had to break my own hands and you reset and you try right it exactly it was yeah. like all right yeah. just 
just reset. Yeah, it took <laughs> hey, me like on, 15 years to figure that out. 14 years. <laughs> yeah. so you're way ahead of the curve. You're way ahead. Of the curve. Yeah, I get. It was a positive starting late. I was in my 40s when I started, so it was like, yeah, I'm a little more mature. I really didn't care about too much. As you know, my compet. I knew I was like, oh, my high level competitive days are over. I, you know, I played all sports and wrestled and stuff, and it was like, no, no, you don't need to do that in here. Like at first. It only took me not long, a couple of weeks. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, okay. <laughs> well, I think back in the day, it was just such a different mindset. It well, that's like, it. You yeah. still see gyms doing that. Like, I think some of the like old school Brazilian gyms are still Pahana for practice. It's just going. Yeah. Down. And, uh, but I, it's slowly, it's like <clears throat> changing a little bit. Like, and a lot of it's too, like student retention and how to build gyms. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You don't want to just run everybody out the door with smashing them at the beginning. Back, because I think before there was such limited, resources there's only a couple gyms in big towns any uh, even at, even still like there was maybe two or three or four gyms in a big town yeah. so there wasn't a lot of competition so they would just smash right. everybody and whoever stayed got stayed <laughs> that's it right yeah and then, and yeah. then but now we're like hey we don't want to run student right. soft school it's like introductory classes we're trying to make sure everybody's not hey don't destroy the white belt like help them a little yeah. bit <laughs> uh, so you can go hard with you know it's sure. a, but everybody's kind of on the same page for the most part and for like, the most part yeah. they don't want to see them leave either because they know <clears throat> hey this builds the gym and this is another training partner which within a couple of years will be a really good training partner and yeah it's guys good for the cool. sport though that's good for the martial art that we've that it's evolved that way you know what I, I mean? So. That, you know, to keep people in the door. Like, I'm not, I don't want to say it that way in terms of like, yeah, it's a business. It's a business. Well, it is. You know, we we talk about that. Yeah. yeah, it's a business, but you're learning one of the greatest martial arts. In my opinion, I always say this, my personal opinion, but it's one of the greatest martial arts you can learn, not just for confidence, but man, I mean, off the mat, to be quite I honest. Agree. I it's, agree. 100%. Lots yeah. of examples of people using it off the mat for self-defense. They've never taken a self-defense class in their life, but they train a lot of jujitsu and mm -hmm. see videos of there's guys get attacked and they <clears throat> to, to uh you know defend themselves sure. effectively so yeah, yeah i think, I think jujitsu is one of the most effective things you can learn for sure for self yeah and it course. even changes uh like people's mindset <clears throat> like to treat people differently you yeah. know what i mean like it does i don't know what it is I, I, i've ever i mean i've pinpointed i think for my own personal wise but like people ask me they're like man why are you, you you're kind of like you're easy going with people and i'm like that serves no purpose not to be man i'm like they're not doing anything to me and if they're Absolutely. abrasive i try to de-escalate that by a different conversation with them because of it because i know what i know now and in my opinion sounds egotistical but there's not much they're going to be able to do if they decided to get physical with me at 40 some years old because i really don't feel like <laughs> rolling on the ground with a guy right now unless <laughs> it's with one of my buddies you know what i mean like at the mat yeah. you know so it's like yeah i have no yeah, guy can scream all he wants it's like hey calm down bud it's cool it's all good man <laughs> Then having kids that play sports, you tend to, I, I come across it a lot. A lot of dads are well, for sure. puffer and puffers. Yeah. <laughs> I have two kids who are grown now, but yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, being around sports my whole life, even as an adult, uh, there's a lot of parents that um, are living yeah. their, their glory days to yep. their kids. Yeah. For sure. Even in jujitsu, yeah. by the way, you have a lot of parents who don't train. I, so I wondered that. Yeah. And uh, you know, yeah, there's, I've seen some parents um, get pretty, pretty uh, excited watching their kids compete like i don't mean that in a good way i mean they get over exuberant sure. yeah They're right right for not in a kids. positive manner <laughs> not in a positive way that i think is uh you know yeah well i think we and we, we've all seen those over exuberant parents yeah uh, oh for yeah sure. for sure we're pretty lucky at our academy we we have you know i have really good kids coaches my head kids coach uh is chloe mcnally and she runs a fantastic kids program and the parents are all on board. We actually have a mom's class that runs at the same time as our kids. Oh, really? Yeah. Our wow, mom that's came. awesome, man. So one of my moms is a purple belt, and she's been with me for a little while. So she started teaching the moms. We have a secondary mat in our academy, and uh, they take the moms in the back while the kids are training uh, front, and they run a, they run a mom's class, and they, they get after it. Like, nice. I'll walk in here, and I'll be like, they're just like, on, man. And they're laughing at the same time. They're, having sure. fun, but they're smashing each other and going for nice. it. Nice. Having a great time. So oh, we have really good parents here. We've been pretty fortunate. Good. That's, that's good cool. though. And I mean, that's what builds it to, I mean, get, getting, you know, surrounding yourself with good people, surrounding the gym with good people that come yeah. in. Obviously they, they get weeded out. You know, we've talked about that before about. It's all about that atmosphere. You know, you know? Create, create that's a hundred. That is, yeah. It's everything. It's everything. Having a, having a good culture and vibe in your Academy is just absolutely yeah. 
everything, avoiding toxic behaviors, yeah. running people out who demonstrate they have toxic behaviors. Yeah. Don't know. I, my opinion, do not allow those things to enter your academy. If you catch them, yeah. flush get it rid out. of it. Yeah. Flush yeah. Flush it out. I, you know, that's like a little, that's like a little cancer. It can start. Yeah. Spreading. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I always tell people like, I want jujitsu be the second best thing that you, that we offer at, at my gym, you know, atmosphere, culture, friendship is the first. And then, yeah. you know, jujitsu comes with that, you know? I agree with you hundred percent. I yeah. agree. Jujitsu will come. If you got, yeah. if you got instructors, then the jujitsu will be there, but yeah. you got yeah. good atmosphere. Got to sure. have that other. Yep. I still have never come in, come in or had anybody come in saying, I want to be an IBJJF world champion. So <laughs> they're there for the, <laughs> you know, not yet. not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, well, I got, come to uh, next I got kids with aspirations at this point. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but... Whether realistic or not, uh, but they're all great. Like they, they're great training partners. They're, they got great mentality and a great attitude. And, uh, you know, we have, I have a, I have a no gi crowd and a gi crowd and they're very different. Some of us, you know, some of, there's a little bit of cross training in there. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a little bit of guys who do both. Uh, cause they're, they're serious enough in both where they just want to experience both. Uh, but there's definitely two distinct crowds and my, my geek crowd is definitely a little older, more mature, more relaxed vibe. Like they're definitely mm -hmm. more of that relaxed, chill vibe. My yep. no geek crowd's a little more intense. They're a little more. Yeah. Aggressive. A little younger. But yeah. A little younger. It's definitely a younger crowd, but they're yeah. all great kids. Uh, yeah, like, that's awesome. real, we have a great crew here. I'm pretty, pretty enjoyed Good. a lot. Yeah. I, uh, as we've been talking, I, uh, texted Lyman and, uh, oh, did told you? Him, yeah, I told him you're on the, yeah. yeah. And he said, tell him hi. And he is one of the best LEO BJJ instructors in the nation. Oh, uh, that's so nice to me, man. He uh, always makes me feel good. Yeah. So we're, uh, we're, uh, we're a C4C affiliate with him. Oh, so. that's fantastic. I, yeah, I, I believe I knew I I've seen that. Which, yeah. That's so, funny. yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to get, I've, I've told Ari this before you put in the word, I would love to host an Invictus event at our gym. We have 4,000 square feet of mats. Let's, let's do it. Like, I mean, yeah. that's more than enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're right between, we're in Canton, Ohio. We're two hours uh, north it, of Columbus. An Chad, hour. you keep talking. Yeah. I'm going to step go out. Of the, I got to step out of the office. Someone just stopped at my house and I got to go talk to him real quick. Yep. Yep. You're good. <laughs> I'll be back. We'll keep talking. As long as Jason, you're good. We're not holding oh, you I'm up. Good, right? man. We're okay. good. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, you know, right in between Cleveland and Columbus and, uh -huh. you know, not far from Detroit yeah. and different, you know, so we've Let's got this, it. we've, we've got the space. Hit, we haven't hit the Midwest. Like we've been, uh, like East coast, West coast. Yeah. Um, like Vegas, um, Texas, yep. a little bit of Florida. We touched on Florida, but yeah, we haven't done the Midwest. So I think that would be, I think it would draw some people from, you know, we're, sure. you know, we're for seven, sure. seven hours from Tennessee. Like, you know, there's, you could touch a lot of States, I think. Yeah. And usually we're, I think we're at the point now with Invictus that uh, if we put on an event, we're going to, people will travel. Like they'll, yeah. they'll come for the event because um, there's, it's, it's starting to, you know, guys kind of know each other now from different mm -hmm. areas of the country because they've gone to multiple events together. Right. And so they, they have their own little groups that they, they, you know, their own friendships they've made. For sure. And, you know, they'll, Hey, let's all like, Hey, I'll meet you at that next Invictus. And, and whatever so we've kind of got that going on too so i think we're i feel like we're kind of at a point where most places we put on an event we can we can mm -hmm. draw you know we can draw good enough to make it a decent event you know right all our numbers yeah. are pretty good like yeah. i think last time <clears throat> i mean it's been a couple of years since we were less than 50 at an event like, okay yeah. so it's 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 going strong so yeah, yeah. like you know yeah you know, it, it, We'll just we'll start setting it up. It's not it's not even that complicated. It's, I mean, you've got the space. We just got to find the time. Yeah, a couple yep. of instructors to fill the slots. Yep. We just put the call out and people show up. Just people show up, dude. Yeah, that's it. We do our thing and have a good time. Mm -hmm. I know. I feel like I don't know how you feel like having seminars, not like this, but like just normal seminars are harder now. Like back in the day, I don't know you. I traveled to go to seminars. Um. And now I think we have so many, like I have, there's five black belts at our gym now. Yeah. So, you know, just because I'm bringing this black belt in on this weekend and I tell you, you should come because he's good. You're already there training all week with the other black belts. So I think the mentality is different now. You know what I mean? I, you know, I think, I think there's way more information out. So like that's it. Like day fanatics. Yeah. So everybody's like spending like their entire check on fanatics videos. Library. Yep. <laughs> that. So they're getting these instructors um through that and so there's still mm -hmm. they're 
in information that you could only get at a seminar or, you know, before yeah. like, that was the best way to get it. You don't have to do that anymore. You can no. buy the video and your friends and you train yep. and you guys practice the techniques and kind of figure it out. And, uh, you know, and, but you're not learning bullshit YouTube stuff. Like you'll, you can learn from the top. For sure. The, you know, top instructor. Yeah competitors in the game put videos out you could pull them and start learning their techniques they got sub meta like Lachlan giles puts out who knows how much stuff you know yeah it's just so much information available and so guys much. are getting good you know people are yeah. at blue belt level are good you know? yeah you know you go to i feel like i go to competitions now and i see blue belts and they, it looks like <laughs> me 15 years ago that would have been a black belt match but now these are blue belts throwing up crazy it's crazy like, man techniques at each other and just looking amazing doing it you know absolutely the game has improved a lot too for sure yeah it's way way different i um we had uh we have an annual uh cancer awareness event every year so little backstory is the guy that started east coast martial arts back in 1986 he passed away at stage four cancer in 2015 um but when he was diagnosed i started this annual cancer awareness event where i would bring in a high level jujitsu guy and a hundred percent of the money goes to charity goes to one of our local cancer foundations. Mm -hmm. Um, so over the years we've had, I mean, a who's who, but a couple of years ago we had John Carlo in oh, and yeah. it, it worked out that he won ADCC the week before we had him scheduled Okay, two years ago. So, yeah, yeah. So it was awesome. And he's a, uh, as you know, an awesome instructor. He's a good guy too. Good dude. Yeah. But, and I wish I would have said it there in the moment is he did a Q&A at the end and mm -hmm. people would ask him like, hey, what's your training regimen? He's like, whatever John tells me to do. Yep. You know, what do you do? How do you do your strength training? I listen to John, That's you know, sense. like whatever. And I know not, none of us are John Donaher, obviously, but listen to your coach. They, they know some things, you know what I mean? Like, and That's a guy right. like that is listening to his coach. Yeah. Well, you know, he, John Carlo, I'm sure you know his story, but like, he was a really good gi competitor mm -hmm. and decided he wanted to, to get into no gi. And, and yeah. so he found John and started training with them. And John brought him in and like to see what he, I think he did. I think it was one, it was, I, I think I'm correct. It was a year and a half that he okay. was training with John before he went to ADCC, maybe two. Yeah. He goes and has that performance, that incredible performance. Crazy. Just ran through everybody. In, yeah. in division. And, uh, you know, submitted Denise and like, when Denise was really hot too. And I mean, yeah. was, that was a very impressive run. And that was like 18 months of just consistent training with John and the team. Yeah, for sure. Was, but it was a dedicated athlete. I think it takes two things. It takes a coach mm -hmm. that, the, that that fits you. And then it takes the athlete that fits that coach. Oh and, yeah. And that, then that boom, you see those little, you see that happen and it's really yeah, cool. for sure. We held it down, Terry. Yeah, we, we held it down. You're like, great. Thanks. It is funny though. Everybody <laughs> here is pretty much like, well, what does John say? Well, what does John? And, I, and so the Q and A thing is interesting. So John does a Q and A after every class. So uh -huh. he, he does. He teaches here twice a, twice a week, Monday through Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday once a day. And after every class, he sits with all the kids. I say kids; they're like you know, to me, they're kids. Right, but right. Kids, and he'll sit there for 30, 40 minutes, and they'll just throw question after question after question at him. And I've never seen him once not have the answer. Yeah, wow, that's nice. answer every single time. I've never seen anything like it. But that 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 Q and A thing, I think, kind of comes from him because he does that. But Probably. you know, my understanding, uh, he doesn't really do that with the pro guys. He only does that with the recreational guys. Oh, and I've gotcha. seen all basic white belts through stuff. Yeah, and just nice. patience. Just have the patience of a saint walking them through the most basic technique. But if he has expectations on you and you ask a stupid question. He'll let you know he thinks it's he'll stupid. let you know. He'll still uh, answer it, but he'll let you know that's ridiculous. You don't know that, but let me. Uh, let's do it. That's awesome. Do you, add, Chad? Do you asked Jason about the uh, Giancarlo. Well, I was just telling him like that he the, said that's what yeah that's yeah John said. Yep, yeah. I, I yeah I try to bring that up every now and again because it's so so big. Yeah, so it's big a testament of good coaching and having and having a good athlete or a good student. You know what I mean? Well. It's a as Jason said, it's it takes both, right? Because sure, yeah, it does hundred percent. There's a lot sure. of good coaches out there with probably good athletes and good jujitsu guys that just don't listen to them, right? I'll, I'll tell you, let me you tell know? you, John is so well respected. Like people even ask him relationship advice, and, I'll, and I I think he gives really good relationship advice too. To be honest with you, like if you people will ask him per, a question about their personally, they have a personal thing they want to yeah. ask him. 
he'll listen and he'll give his he'll give advice. Give it. <laughs> and it's always on point. And you'll go, yeah, yeah, he's right. He's That's right. right. <laughs> you know, you're like, damn. <laughs> What does he not know? Right. That's the thing. Now you start trying to find a question like, what does he not know? Can I stump him? Can I stump Chad? Oh, no. I would not even try. Like, you would know what try. I mean? Like, yeah. First of all, I don't have the mental bandwidth to try to stump that guy. Well, that, yeah. but I wouldn't even, you know, no. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the Zen Matt. He just sits around and reads, doesn't he? Because that's all he does. He like sits around uh, and reads. I don't, I, you know, I, a lot of the guys tell him when they're traveling with them, like if he's not talking to you, he's on his phone watching combat or watching some type of jujitsu. Yep video or wrestling. breaking it down and like yeah just stuff. constantly yeah. researching and i yeah. know when he teaches he'll teach like he goes through he's you know I, I go to like every class just about and i see him go through the same sequences and and concepts multiple times but it always changes a little he's always adding something or taking something away or finding a different thing and he'll explain like we found this problem here so now we started doing this and it corrected it and this will like it's always evolving it's never just static yeah uh, you know a lot of instructors i think they get real static and it's easy that you know to do that yeah just teach kind of the same stuff over sure. and over <clears throat> But it, that doesn't happen there. Like it's constantly like it's co everything's constantly being worked on. Everything's constantly in the lab. Everything's constantly being improved uh, and tested and pressure tested. Like Chad likes to pressure test everything. That's what his he likes to use that term. I love that term pressure testing techniques. Mm -hmm. Constantly doing it. When they find a flaw, they find a way to fix it. Sure. And keep going. It's in that field, man. Test. You you kind of have to though, right? Like not everybody does it, but yeah, if you want to be the best in the world, like you better. Like that's what it takes for them. To I mean, that's what top. it takes. Right. That's yeah. like, I mean, Invictus or, or, you know, the, the, the C, P, uh, C, J, J. C4C. Yeah. C4C. C4C. We are a C4C gym and I can never get it freaking <laughs> right. Drives me crazy. Not, <laughs> it's like, come on, man. But like those, like that stuff has to be pressure tested, like on the right. Yeah, yeah. And we do the know, same like, thing, by the way, with, with PJJ. Uh, yeah. we're constantly, like, we have a lot of different instructors from different parts of the country, from different departments who have had different, uh, who have who have learned different techniques and different retention systems and different different ways of dealing with with problems we encounter in combatives, and it's and, and everybody that Chad brings in is super knowledgeable, super high level in combatives and police work, and has great stuff to bring to the table. And when we teach together, <laughs> together we all exchange new things we've worked on, things we have, and we in the stuff that works and that we see works, we we bring into the lesson plan and start teaching it. Yeah. We're constantly yeah. adding and taking away things too. I think you have to in martial arts, in combatives, whatever it is, you can't just say, okay, this this is the one thing. Like you have to constantly be trying to find ways to improve it uh and pressure testing what you're doing because I mean, you just have to keep trying to improve. Like if you don't, you're, you either are getting better. Or you're getting worse in my mind. I don't think you're ever static. I think if you're static, you're getting worse. So All right, for sure. Trying to get better. Yeah. yeah. Trying, to, trying to get better. Yeah. You can't in this, uh, with this martial art, you can't put yourself in a, in a box. You can't, <laughs> Absolutely like you're, you're going to, you're, yeah. you're, 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 you're losing before you're even beginning. If you're, if yeah. you do that, at you any know, point. and the, ahead, this sound, this sounds so cliche. And I didn't believe it until I got my black belt. I've been a black belt six years. And I feel in that six years, I've gotten so much better at jujitsu than the previous whatever, you know, and maybe because it's, I don't know, you've got that black belt and you finally realize you deserve it and you've worked hard or I don't know what it opens up, but I feel like I've gotten better in that amount of time. I feel the same way. I feel actually, mm -hmm. I always say, yeah, I got, I, I started definitely when I got my black belt, I started getting better. I think there's a little bit of pressure too, when you first strap that on. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah this in the gym and fight people <laughs> with this on my waist there's expectations yeah. and uh so you start trying to get better there and then yeah for sure like my when i was six years ago to now i feel like i feel like a completely different person i right, right now i would demolish me six years ago oh like, sure sure it would yes. be a demolishment yeah and there is something about once you get your black belt well there's i think two things happen i think guys there are guys that get their black belt and they never get better they got there with, with what they got and they just, they yeah. just, they don't, they don't try to improve. They, they just don't. Do what they got. And then yeah. you got the guys who, which I think is the, with the martial arts mindset, the correct mindset is you keep trying to, you just keep learning. Cause it's just another marker. Like yeah. now you got your black belt. And I've, I've heard Ari say this and other guys say this too. You'll be a black belt way longer than you'll be. The, the, then the, the, all the belts, the other ones. Yeah. You're going to be a black yeah. belt way longer. Right, and, right. In the grand scheme of things, you're right. You really yeah. are going by far, by, by far. far. And, then, yeah. and then your black belt, I think, is like a base. 
like that. Now you got the base and now I can build from that base and start to actually learn real jujitsu. At least in my, this is my experience is like that black belt gave me a base to start from. Now I've really been able to develop a lot of things and, and, and really see improvement in, in, in my game and my physical application of the game, as well as my, my, my knowledge level. Like I've really mm-hmm. seen this come together over the last, like I said, six, I've been a black belt six years too. Six years. Yeah. So, been, yeah, so like I, I feel the same way. Yeah. You remember that day? I was late to my black belt promotion. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was my, my ex. That was the person I was with. That was her fault. Oh. <laughs> but I got, yeah, I, I've never lived that down. I was late to my black belt. I wasn't so late. Like I was like 20 minutes late. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like, you know, hours late. It wasn't like I've missed the promotion, you know, Complete you day. Get the black belt now. it was just, uh, showed up on the wrong like day. No, but I still hear it to this day. You know, you remember when you were late to your promotion? Yeah. You, 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 Jason, you do realize that's never going away, right? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. You know, the funny thing is we got a, we got a reputation here at our Academy for starting everything late. And, uh, and that's totally by coincidence, but yeah, we start everything. Every class starts late, just about, uh, it's just the way it is here, but, uh, yeah. but we're very laid back at our Academy. That's awesome. Here, so. Hey, that may, like we said earlier, man, that makes for a great atmosphere. That makes yeah, for it, people it, to want to be it, there. It, it fits you know? the culture we have. And yeah. so it's kind of a running joke that we, we run. Late that's awesome. That's awesome. Everything. I uh, might. I might forget C4C and all that stuff, but I'm never going to forget that Jason was late to it. was stuff. late. And, and I just <laughs> met him today. I'm super late. thankful. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I intentionally don't start class on time now when I teach just because I got to live up to our reputation. You gotta get, you gotta, you're like, <laughs> you're on time and I'm like, well, like I'll have a, I have a five thirty class every day and I'm like, well, it's five 30. I'll give it six more minutes and then I'll walk out. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Very good. Well, great stuff today, man. We've, uh, we've kept you for a long time. I want to ask you one quick thing. Do you think the bad stuff that's being showed out there, if there is, I'm not going to name anybody. I know there's a lot of bad material out there for law enforcement officers. Is that hurting you guys at all to do things like what you're doing with Chad, what you're doing with, uh, with Ari and Invictus, is that putting any kind of damper on things? And when I say that, there's a lot of information out there, social media wise of giving bad techniques to people to do stuff. Is that hurting you guys at all? You mean, let me, so you're saying people put out bad techniques? Like uh, there's people out there that should not be training LEOs. Oh, and- uh, well, that, that's always existed. And that's, okay. that actually, it's a lot better now than it used to be. Okay, good. Like, that's what, okay. more of the wild west. Like it was. You know, like you had a chief that saw a karate movie and said, man, I want my officers to learn karate, you know, so it'll be super dangerous on the street, right? Or whatever. I mean, I I think there was just not really good training before. And like I said before, it was kind of like, I mean, for lack of a better term, you just grab people and beat them till if they fought you, grab them and beat them till they stop fighting, which is not, it, it was all we had. It was all we were shown back then. You know, mm-hmm. now it's just different. We have so many more, we have so much more information about what's effective, yeah. you know, and, and that's, you know, that's, it's getting better that way, like Good. by far. So it's better now by far. And then Good. actually the fact that there's a bad incident that happens, usually what the response is now and what's happened now, it wasn't always this way or right away, but people have finally realized they need more training. Because we were, because we, yeah. I think people assume Good. that cops are well trained, and I know people still assume assume this because I'll have people ask me, "Well, what, what?" I mean, I mean, they trained you guys and stuff, right? I'm like, no, like <laughs> not like a week of something in the academy, and then most departments don't even have a combatives program. Mm-mm. They don't, and 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 cops are woefully undertrained. Sure, and it's changing. We're working hard to change yeah. it. And a lot of it is just getting cops trained on their own because you just can't wait for the department to do it. You don't have that kind right. of time. But uh, you know, it's better now than it ever was before, for sure. Like that's yeah. definitely improved. And in the bad incidents that we talk about, uh, without naming any, in the long run, I think they have actually contributed to departments more times than not, seeking out good training. Like good. Okay. Before C or stuff like that. They're looking for stuff that actually works, you know. Good. Yeah, because yeah. you see so many um 
reels or whatever, you know, social media is, is information highway. I mean, come on, we have internet, you know, our days are AOL <laughs> We're dialing up now or yeah. you know, all the way to the reels and stuff. And so there's so much obviously good. I'm trying to always look at the positive I want people to be successful. I want people to get the best of the best. Um, and then I see stupid stuff and I'm like, Oh gosh, this is ruining I think the for good the news is it's getting better. I good. Think it's, it is good. Yeah. Yeah. Then everyone out there listening, I'm sure you all train. You guys have a lot of, uh, you guys have a lot of gyms around you. So seek them out. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> seek out we actually keep a you. list on Invictus of law enforcement friendly gyms on our yep. website. Uh, and it's by all means, not comprehensive. There's a lot of friendly gyms that aren't on there, but we ask everybody if you're law enforcement friendly and you, and, uh, and we go through some things to confirm it as well. We, you know, you have to show us some police officers that train there so we can talk to some people. Sure. But, uh, if we can confirm your, you know, your law enforcement friendly gym, we'll put you up on our website as <clears throat> place that you can go train. A lot of that's not just for officers who are looking for the first time, but you know, guys travel and you know, like yeah, most people, for sure. cops are just like everybody else who trains jujitsu. When they go to another town, they want to try the local gym and they don't want to skip training just because they're out of town. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. I think it's a good thing for, for, for those guys to be able to look up. Okay. Well, they say these gyms are friendly and this one's in my area. I'm going to go check it out. And uh, <clears throat> those, I think stuff like that is, it's grown a lot. And so there's just, it's just way better for officers to get training in and, and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah. Good, good. Yep. We're on that. We're on that list. Yes, you are. Uh, yep. Yes, yep. you guys. All C4C gyms are on that list for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. We, you know, we work very closely with Chad. We're affiliated. You know, C4C and Invictus are, have a yeah. close affiliation. <laughs> right. Uh, I've developed a good friendship with Chad over the years. And uh, so is Ari. And, uh, you know, Chad's a very good friend of mine. I, uh, yeah. he's also a mentor. I look up to him in, in a lot it's of ways. It's a good dude. I mean, just a great guy. Just um, having that. Yeah. Having the opportunity to spend time with him on the show, getting to meet him and getting to talk to him. I was just like, man, like I'm not guy. an LEO and I just like want to hang out with you. He has a lot of loyalty with, with, <clears throat> with crew for, and it's well-earned. Like he, uh, he's very loyal to us. We're very loyal to him. And, uh, it's, you know, it's because he kind of, he's a good guy and he's got yeah. your back. And, yeah. Yep. But, and we, we, you know, we, our relationship goes beyond law enforcement and jujitsu, our relationships, and not just me, but with the other instructors, it's, sure. we're friends. And so if we have, I, you know, when I need fatherly advice, you know, and not that he's that much older than me, he's only a little bit older than me, but I kind of, you know, I go to him. If I have an issue, sure. I'll sit down with him and say, Hey man, this is, what do you think of this? And he's. He's a wise guy. He's made yeah. a lot of good decisions and for sure. Uh, he's got a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience. Got a lot of knowledge. You know? So he Chad's very fortunate to have him in my life. And uh, I'm thankful uh, every day for for people like Chad that I get to call friends. Greatest you know? things we could tell anyone or teach our any youth underneath us. Surround <clears throat> yourself with good people, man. Surround yourself with good people, Absolutely. people that are going to, Absolutely. you know, grow you, lift you, and and always be there for you, challenge you at the same time. You know, if they gotta be hard on you, they will, but the, you know that they love you. So Absolutely. You know, it's a big thing that we talk about on the show all the time. Well, Jason, thank you so much, man, for your time and everything and just hanging out with you, getting to meet you. Yeah. Um, it's been an honor and a privilege. Uh, why don't you do this? Yeah, hey, go ahead, yeah. man. I, <laughs> I was, was going to tell you to shout out everything you want okay. to get at everything. Yes, because I like to have all that in the show notes. I want people to um, <clears throat> go out there and click on it, find it, encourage them to get after it. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you. So, first of all, thanks for having me on. I was I was excited when you hit me up and asked me to to do it. I've, I've been following you guys for a little while, seeing your see your podcast and stuff, and and uh, so I was very excited. Thanks for having me on. I'm sure, and, um, man. Shout outs. You know, obviously, I've been shouting out Chad quite a bit, and we shout out Invictus. Obviously, if you guys are if you don't know about us, it's InvictusLEO dot com. We also are InvictusLEO on Instagram uh, with our social media. We post a lot on both. We post information about officers we post a lot of techniques and things as well like all the officers that are involved with invictus and c4c when they post techniques will many times post them as well on there uh we have seminars where we get guys together and we train jujitsu we talk combatives we will relate our jujitsu to combatives when we're teaching at seminars as well yeah. but uh we'll teach everything from sport jujitsu no gi gi combatives based stuff um, you know, whatever we try to put together a complete seminar. And I really think a lot of what Invictus is, is, is it's just the love of jujitsu one, because if you're training jujitsu, you typically love it and bringing that love into the combative field or into the law enforcement field. 
at those seminars. So it's, it's really about, You'll be doing straight jujitsu. We'll learn whatever. We, um, Nicholas Miragali came out to the one in New York, taught like almost three hours. And uh, like he was, one of the things he taught was like smother taps. We're obviously not going to do smother taps on the street, but we're learning <laughs> jujitsu. We're learning cool stuff. And sure. it's, that's part of what we're doing is we're trying to learn cool stuff too and and enjoy jujitsu as well. So yeah, I, that, uh, let's go. Shout out to my gym, Hizzle Gracie Austin. Everybody out here is killing it. All my competitors that are, putting in hard work and and constantly competing and, and putting it on the line. Shout out to them. Shout out to my coaches. Shout out to everybody involved with Invictus and C4C. Uh, love all you guys and all the work you guys do for us. Um, I, I can't say, I can't say enough about you to shout out, obviously to everybody on the job working. I want everybody to stay safe, go train. Don't be scared. Uh, don't make excuses. Don't be lazy. Go find an academy, start training. You'll you will thank yourself later at some point for for sticking with it. So, and thank you guys for having me. Yeah, on. yeah absolutely, man. dude. <clears throat> thank you for everything, man. God bless you and your family. Keep up the great work. Keep pushing forward. If you ever need anything, if you need promotion, if you guys are going to come out and do something East Coast, or, you know, East Side here, I yeah, say I think Ohio's we East Coast. <laughs> Ohio's Midwest. Little, but... I think we're going to try to put something together at some point. Yeah, when you yeah. were gone, when you were gone, I hit him up. Told okay, him we, I would love to host. We have yeah, the we'll, space, we'll, so we'll, 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 we'll message and we'll get it figured out. We'll yeah, man. Time yeah. that works, and we'll make it happen. If you yeah, need any awesome. information out there um, that we can help with, uh, anytime, obviously hit us up, and we can you know talk about it on a show. If you ever need to come back on and talk about anything, obviously, you know we're that's what that's our awesome. goal of this is is the platform to project <laughs> jitsu and not you know in a way of getting everyone you know kind of like hey man let's get on board with what this is different. This is something different that you, you just can't experience until you're in it. So that was one of the big things for Chad and I. So Jason, thank you so much, man. Appreciate you, brother. Nice. Thanks a lot again, man. Yep. I'll, uh, yep. I'll, yep. see, you. I'll yep. see you guys soon for sure. And anyone awesome. out there listening, if you guys ever want to be on the show and you just want to hit us up, cause it's what we do. We just love to talk and have a good time and no pressure and, you know, yep. ask some goofy questions to you, but <laughs> <laughs> through conversation, <laughs> but anyway, all right, man, we'll see you guys till next week. Everyone take care of yourself. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Stay after it. God bless you guys all. And uh, we'll see you, man. Take it easy. Awesome.